Welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight we're going to be making Keto Brownie Bites. Sounds pretty yummy, doesn't it? Come along with me and let's get started. Brownies are amazing. And these brownies are particularly amazing because they're no bake. So they have all the taste and consistency of brownies, but of course they're keto. And also it's very simple, it has five ingredients and it only takes a minute to whip up a batch. So hopefully you will enjoy them. I used a sifter for the first time in a really long time. I used to use the sifter all the time when I was a um, sad diet baker. But this was my first time using a sifter for the keto diet and I really felt like it helped with the consistency of the almond flour and I wish that I had used the sifter to sift my sweetener and my cocoa powder. So hopefully you can learn a lesson from me and sift all three ingredients when you make these brownie bites. So come along with me and let's get started. So to start our brownie bites, you just need a small to medium sized bowl and we are going to put six tablespoons of almond flour in here. But I'm going to be using my sifter I just find that it makes it super fine. So I'm going to put my six tablespoons of almond flour in here and I'm going to sift them into my bowl. So six tablespoons, two, three, four, five, and six. This is going to give our brownie bites a nice fine texture. And we got the suggestion to use a sifter from Christy Davis, so thank you very much Christy. It is definitely making it super fine. I don't know if you can tell, but it is really fine. Perfect. And I'm going to stop there. And I don't know if you can see in my sifter all the big chunks that just don't like to break down are left in your sifter. Sifting is also very good if we were going to be using like baking powder for biscuits or some of our other dishes. You can sift all your dry ingredients together and that way everything is very well incorporated. So our next step is baking cocoa. You can use pure cacao, you can just use regular baking cocoa, but you need it to be unsweetened. And this is just 100% cocoa. And we need six tablespoons of that as well. Then we need to add some sweetener, and I'm going to be using two different kinds of sweetener, just because I have the two kinds of sweetener, and because I find that sometimes erythritol can have a bit of a um, cooling effect, and so I'm going to be using a little bit of the monk fruit erythritol blend, but I'm also going to be using a little bit of allulose, because I have both of them. So I want three tablespoons of each. And of course you can do this to your own sweetness preference. If you like it less sweet, you could add less. If you like it more sweet, you could add more. And I'm just going to incorporate that in. I guess I could have sifted that sweetener because it's looking a little bit like it's in balls. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla extract. Whoops! And my little cardboard piece went in there. And I'm going to add about a teaspoon. You could use a different flavor than this if you wanted, if you wanted to add orange in it or raspberry. They make all different kinds of extracts if you wanted to flavor your keto brownie bites with a different flavor besides vanilla, you absolutely could. I also need about five 
tablespoons of softened butter. Five tablespoons of softened butter. And I'm just going to start mixing that around and get everything incorporated into our butter. where you live your butter may be too hard or too soft to incorporate everything well so I'm going to pop this into my microwave for just a couple of seconds to assist our butter in melting now if you have the opposite circumstance you can absolutely pop this into the freezer for a couple of minutes to make your butter just a bit harder Everything is coming more into a ball now, and that's what we want. Now I'm going to add just a few chopped walnuts. I've chopped some here very finely because I liked my brownies with nuts when I was a carb eater, so I'm just going to put a little bit in there. We don't need too much, just to give our brownie bites. A little bit of a crunch. You can omit nuts, you could add nuts, you could use pecans, you could put chocolate chips in here, you could put coconut in here, you could pretty much do whatever you want. These are a blank canvas. Okay, so I have my brownie batter, if you will, here in my bowl, and I'm going to get my cookie baller and I'm going to start scooping them onto my tray. So I have my little quarter sheet baking tray here and I have just lined it with my silicone mat. I'm going to take my cookie scoop. We have a cookie scoop in our favorites on Amazon and they're quite inexpensive but they do tend to help make things a similar size. So I'm just going to start scooping my little brownie bites onto my mat. I'm trying to make them even. It all depends on how large you scoop them and how many you will get. After we have scooped these, we are going to let them sit in our refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes and make sure that they are thoroughly set up. And then as soon as they are, you can store these. You could store them in a baggie or you could store them in a container. And they should keep nicely in the refrigerator for several days. You could also freeze them if you wanted. And then just get one out of the freezer when you want a little treat and kind of let it soften up and get to room temperature again. And I think I might let CJ count these when we're done because apparently my counting skills are negligible. They look like little tiny brownies. Hopefully they will taste like little tiny brownies. Sometimes you just want a little bite of something. And I don't have enough at the bottom to make one more ball. So I'm just going to leave this for the cook to eat later. So here we have our keto brownie bites. And it's nice because you do not have to bake them. So they're almost like a fat bomb, an advanced fat bomb. All right, CJ, how many do we have? 11. <laughs> 11 seems to be my number. All right, so 11. Keto brownie bites are going to go into the refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes, and then we'll have a taste test. Okay, they've been in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. So now I'm going to put a couple of them on a plate for CJ to have a taste. Is 
Is that how excited you are about brownies? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, CJ. Hi. Brownies. Brownie bites. Sure. Brownie bites. Yeah. Brownie balls. Brownie bombs. Whatever you want to call them. Yeah, they look good. All right, let's see. So these have been in the refrigerator for about 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they kept their shape. Mm-hmm. They're good. Be good with a cup of coffee, I bet. They're, um, sweet. Not much of a cooling flavor because of the erythritol. So maybe the allulose helped balance it out. But no, they're good. They're rich. Um, really got a good chocolate flavor, but not too much. And, um... So it'd be a good way to satisfy your sweet tooth without going yeah. overboard. Yeah, and it's hard to believe that these are no bake. That this is pretty simple. So yeah, I think this is a winner, and I think people will like it. Awesome. Bye. Thanks Bye. for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoyed the brownies as much as we did. We would like to have you join us again, so please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of our further content. We release new recipes every Sunday and we have keto conversations on Wednesdays and that's where we get together and talk about different ketogenic topics. Sometimes we have keto food unboxings, sometimes we have what we eat on keto. So be sure and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when those videos go out. We'd also like you to join us on our social media. We're on Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and a lot of times we post teaser photos there. We post photos of previous recipes that we have done and that we might be eating for dinner that night. So it gives you an opportunity to continue to see some of our other recipes that you might have missed out on, especially if you're a new subscriber. All of our information, recipes, nutritional information, and other things can also be found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. So head on over there and visit that site as well. We hope that you'll come back and we'll see you next time on CJ's Keto Kitchen.